meeting, our Building Envelope Tech Team meeting. And um, I wanted to just put out a note that if you haven't entered your audio PIN number, if you could go ahead and do that, that way at the end of the presentation we can unmute you if you have a question. Uh, because we do want this to be a very interactive uh, session this afternoon. So again, thank you so much for joining our Building Envelope Tech Team meeting. The next slide, please. And Okay, so I'm Melissa Lapsa, and I'm from Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and I am the tech team lead for Building Envelopes, and here's our agenda this afternoon. We're going to, I'm going to give you a quick overview of our tech solution team. What is it, and what, how are we working with our members? How can you get involved? And then we're very pleased to have Dr. Alexander Zivov from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and he He's going to give you a brief overview of a retrofit, retrofit case study. And then finally, Dr. Deanna Hunt from Oak Ridge National Laboratory is going to give a, a brief overview of a new project that her team is working on looking at air tightness uh, for new commercial buildings. Next slide, please. So what, what is our Building Envelope Tech Solution Team? So, um, and again, if you have questions along the way and want to enter them into the chat box, feel free, and then we can um, answer those at the end of the presentation. And we're also going to be running some very brief poll questions, so we want to get your feedback along the way. So uh, our tech solution team is part of the Better Buildings Alliance under the Department of Energy. And this is really geared towards, as all of you I'm sure are aware, building owners and managers. And we're looking at um, five different sectors and market solution teams are available in those five sectors to provide uh, specific information for building owners and managers for those five sectors. And then the tech solution teams, there's, we're the seventh of them, are really meant to be a one-stop shop for information on energy-saving technology solutions so that building owners, managers, in our case, we're also um, very much engaged with the um, a and &E, uh, the architecture engineering organizations who also um, need this information on building envelopes and energy-saving um, and cost-efficient solutions. And so we have just recently started our tech solution team and would encourage all of you, if you haven't joined already, to contact me if you'd like to become an official member of our tech, tech solution team. Next slide, please. So our team um, is basically one of the Better Building um, tech solution teams, and we're here to provide specific information on building envelopes. So um, we're going to provide information on demonstration projects, specification documents, case studies and fact sheets, calculators, and analytic tools. And um, these are the members of our team, and uh, Dr. Simon Palin, Dr. Mahabir Banderi, and Caroline Hazard, and Caroline will be running our poll questions for us today. Next slide, please. Great. So, Carol, so, Caroline, go ahead. Okay, great. Thanks, Melissa. Um, Virginia, if you want to go ahead and put this poll question up, that would be great. Um, it would be helpful if the participants could please um, select what type of organization best describes the work you do. Um, you may have seen one of these before. We changed it up a little bit to try and capture our audience a little bit better, the characteristics. So we have a building owner manager, architect engineer, manufacturer, perhaps an energy service provider, um, or research academia. And if uh, your group is not represented here, go ahead and chat that into, type that into your questions window box, and we'll capture that. So um, let me see how far we're getting along on this. We're at about 60%. Let's give it another second or so to get folks to chime in. I do see that a lot of the names on the registration are some of our members, so that's encouraging. We're pleased to see that. So make sure you put in your audio pin so when we're able to get to the chat, 
discussion section, we can hear from you. Let's go ahead and close that out, Virginia, and show the folks the results. Um, as we expected, you know, with, uh, with this tech team, we're anticipating working a lot more with other types of organizations, including the design community. So um, we are well represented here by the architects and engineers at 38%, but we're also excited to have a lot of uh, building owner managers represented and a handful of the other categories. So that's um, really wonderful. Welcome, and uh, we look forward to working with you. Why don't we go ahead to the next slide? Great. Thanks, Caroline. And some of you may wonder, what, you know, why why are envelopes so important to buildings um, on the energy side? And it's because they use almost six quads of energy. And the envelope is the primary determinant of the amount of energy required to heat, cool, and ventilate a building. And this chart down at the bottom, I'm sure all of you are familiar, but um, you know you can see the breakout of that 5.81 quads to the right, and um, you can see how that um, breaks down by envelope components. Next slide, please. So. This lists the key barriers through research that we've done um, and talking with stakeholders as well to why energy, new energy saving envelope technologies are not more readily deployed in the marketplace. Cost, cost of course, supply issues, installation issues, the decision culture, resistance to new products, et cetera, and information gap. So these are the, the tech, these are the barriers that we're trying to address and provide resources for our members. Next slide, please. We did uh, have a series of webinars. Some of you may have participated last year in trying to you know get down into the details of what resources would be most helpful in overcoming those barriers. Um, and so we on the on the right we really um, we could pull out by participant what was most interest. And for just looking at building owners and managers, demonstration projects and performance specifications were the key pieces of information that resources that they were interested in to help overcome those barriers to make in making decisions to try to incorporate uh, new envelope energy saving technologies. And so for FY17, we are focused on demonstration projects to validate windows and air barrier technologies, and we'll provide those results on our website, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. And um, we are doing, as Dr. Deanna Hun will describe, this air barrier um, market analysis. Next slide. Um, so what our goal with the Envelope Tech Team um, is to engage and support our members to accelerate adoption of building envelope technologies. We want to build awareness with the guidance and information. We want to conduct technology demonstrations to really show and validate the performance of those energy-saving, cost-effective envelope solutions. And we want to offer technical assistance for envelope projects. We have created a website, and the URL is there, and that's what the, the homepage looks like. If you were to go on to the Better Buildings website and go under Solutions, I mentioned there's seven technology solution teams, you'll see our building envelope. Ours is a little bit different from the other ones in that we kind of have three different websites in one because we have an area for walls, uh, roofs, um, and windows. So you can find information on all those three areas on our website, and it will be continuing to grow as we get more information we want to be a one-stop shop for envelope information next slide please and um, I would mention that we are going to have some technology demonstration opportunities so if you're interested there's the criteria a building envelope retrofit construction or uh, planned facade retrofit projects so 30,000 square feet or greater um, let us know, and um, you w you might be able to participate with us. That would be fantastic. So we're looking for participants in our dem demonstration opportunities. Next slide, please. So this lists our current members. We're super excited to have 10 members already since we just started, and we have also some supporting organizations listed at the bottom. And I would invite all of you, if you're not already on this list, to email me and join our 
Tech Solution team. And so with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Zivov from the Army Corps of Engineers. I'm sorry, we're going to, Caroline, please run your next <laughs> poll. <laughs> sure, yeah, we're going to do a poll here. That's okay. Um, so this is a little different. We're going to do this poll as an open poll. So um, this means that if you guys could chat into your window box, um, what type of enclosure system topics or challenges you'd like to work with us on? So as Melissa described, um, we're really looking to engage the members and um, you know, working on solutions that are helpful to you in trying to move forward with investments in uh, enclosure systems. So the kinds of things that, just to give you some ideas, maybe there's something that's technology specific, perhaps windows or roofs, or perhaps it's something market barrier specific, you know, related to cost issues or installation issues. Um, perhaps it's related to the building enclosure commissioning or testing procedures or something else. So go ahead and uh, type that in. I see um, we've got some folks uh, lighting up the screen here um, behind the scenes. We can see. Thank you for that. The kinds of things folks are saying are um, install best practices. That's great. Um, maybe if you can share what kind of technology you mean there. Window flashing, ventilated facades, commissioning, super insulated roofs, insulation behind the spandrel, commissioning again. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about what kind of commissioning, if you need specifically enclosure system commissioning. Um, somebody wrote in, we're interested in window retrofit technologies and demonstration projects. That's great. So maybe you can participate in our demonstration, construction, air sealing. So this is awesome. So keep that coming. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll work with you to see how we can advance some of these ideas moving forward. Um, perhaps at follow-on discussions at our next meeting or in an email format. Um, so we really appreciate that feedback. Um, I'll also throw in here, if you have any questions about what the team is about or what we're trying to do, go ahead and type those in and we'll, we'll get to that during our question and answer period at the end of the, the session. So with that, why don't we go ahead and uh, advance it to Dr. Zavav. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I just want to let you know that I was able to get on uh, your um, uh, system. So actually, if you can uh, give me um, uh, uh, driving abilities so I can um, uh, change my slides myself. Sure. So Virginia, if you can go ahead and do that. So, okay. Show my screen. Okay. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, excellent. Well, um, good afternoon. My name is Alexander Zhivov, and I'm with um, the U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center. Uh, I'm working in the area of building and community energy efficiency and energy master planning. And one of uh, my current projects is the International Energy Agency, Annex 61, on business and technical concepts for deep energy retrofit of public buildings. And the, uh, one of uh, five products uh, from uh, this um, project is a technical guide on deep energy retrofit. Uh, so uh, yesterday I sent it to publisher, so it will be um, available. And uh, what our team uh, did in this project is we analyzed um, uh, multiple um, case studies with the deep energy retrofit. It's where you are reducing site energy use uh, by more than 50%. And we found that uh, actually uh, we can uh, uh, easily achieve 50% um, uh, energy use reduction in uh, most climatic zones in uh, buildings with uh, low internal loads by using a handful of technologies. As I, you can see on uh, the slide, uh, a, a bunch of those technologies are related to the building envelope. Some of them are lighting and then the HVAC system. So um, uh, building envelope plays a significant role in uh, energy use reduction. And uh, if uh, you want to have a discussion on economics, we can talk uh, later, or you can ask questions or contact me directly. But um, uh, single uh, measures um, won't uh, pay back. So um, they have a um, uh, prohibitive uh, life, uh, 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 payback period. It relates to the building uh, installation, windows, and such. 
But when you bundle all these technologies, they become cost effective. And one of the important uh, parts of um, this task is uh, air barrier. So let's go to the next slide. And uh, as I promised, uh, most of my presentation will be on the air tightness in new and retrofitted uh, army barracks. And uh, we started interested, being interested in this um, topic uh, not because of uh, energy. A few years ago, we had a lot of problems related to mold and mildew in our buildings. And we started looking at uh, reasons for that. And so we looked at a number of buildings which had these mold problems, and uh, they were energy inefficient. There was a lot of um, air coming through cracks in the building envelope, uh, between uh, windows and walls. And uh, so actually all this moisture and energy issues uh, are coming hand in hand. So from, uh, as you can see on this slide, some of the buildings have very extended um, uh, uh, envelopes are surface in the courtyards, which are not necessary. Uh, uh, when you do major renovations, um, uh, you create more penetrations uh, in the building envelope and uh, between floors than there was before, and they become leakier. Uh, poor workmanship. Uh, a lot of um, uh, cracks um, uh, uh, indoors. Uh, building need a lot of weatherization efforts. Uh, and as you can see, there's a, a lot of examples, and I have thousands and thousands of uh, these pictures uh, where you have um, uh, um, uh, mold uh, issues. So we started this effort in uh, 2006. Um, uh, we tested a few buildings, and uh, they were about 0.57 uh, up to 2 CFM per square foot. So actually, uh, the way you measure air leakage is the airflow through uh, the square foot of the uh, um, building envelope that includes walls and uh, um, slab and uh, um, roof. So all this uh, uh, six uh, box uh, surface at the measured at 75 pascals uh, pressure between inside and outside. And uh, then we did uh, some analysis and we uh, found that um, uh, if you uh, reduce um, air leakage from the baseline of 1 CFM per square foot uh, uh, to um, 0.4, you're already um, gaining uh, quite a bit of um, uh, energy savings. So you can see here uh, how it um, uh, um, differs for 0.25 and 0.15. So we decided that um, uh, actually 0.25 looks uh, very um, uh, attractive. It's very easy to achieve. Uh, you don't need uh, to um, do a lot of effort. And we uh, picked up that number. And for the high performance, uh, we decided that uh, 0.15 is uh, achievable based on uh, uh, some uh, uh, statistics that I'll show you a little bit later. So um, what we did was uh, we developed a requirement. So this requirement was 0.25 CFM per square foot. And this is our team that uh, participated in uh, the meeting when it was uh, endorsed by the um, uh, uh, assistant secretary of the army. Um, uh, and the uh, command of uh, Axim, and uh, you see on this picture um, our team. So we developed uh, the requirement to air tightness. We developed the protocol, which we went through uh, two phases. So one was developed by the small group, and then another one, uh, the newest version, was developed uh, in collaboration with the Air Barrier Association. And then the third um, uh, key to um, uh, success is that you um, have a mandatory requirement to test every single project, the new construction or renovation. So uh, the requirement to air tightness, the protocol, how exactly you measure, and uh, the requirement to measure every single project. And uh, then you can uh, achieve pretty good um, uh, success. So here is a um, uh, slide showing what we mean by the continuous air barrier, uh, just in schematic and the drawing for a plan and the cross-section of the building. And so we require that uh, this uh, type of um, uh, um, drawings and architectural details shall be shown on uh, all the architectural drawings uh, of uh, the project. So here are those architectural details that I'm talking about uh, that uh, you need to uh, require your con uh, contractors to have for new construction and major renovation projects. 
But in many cases, you don't do major renovations, so you do minor renovations. And um, actually, we learned from our um, colleague who um, passed away um, a few years ago, um, uh, Tony Woods, uh, how to deal with the um, uh, authorization of buildings and um, uh, tightening buildings with a minor renovation. So um, uh, we're talking about uh, certain areas and uh, what kind of technique to use and uh, what kind of uh, technologies to be applied. And that's a way you can uh, get to 0.3, 0.25 CFM even with a minor renovation. So these are a sample of um, uh, requirements to air tightness in different countries. So as you can see in uh, uh, our army requirement 0.25 is more stringent than in many in European countries, but not as uh, tough as, for example, requirements for the passive house. Um, but if you put a uh, requirement point 25, you will get to this um, uh, um, point uh, 15. Uh, uh, people will strive to uh, achieve this um, uh, uh, target, and therefore um, uh, uh, they will uh, reach those uh, in average point 15, uh, which is pretty close to the passive house requirement. So this is the requirement to the air barrier materials. Um, uh, specification of uh, the requirement to um, uh, air barrier testing and uh, standards uh, to be applied. And uh, this is uh, some uh, sample of um, results. As you can see, uh, uh, we can achieve uh, easily point, point, uh, point, uh, 0 0.05, uh, point 0.14 uh, in some of our um, uh, new construction to renovation uh, projects. So it's a sample from uh, 500 plus buildings that we already built and renovated since we put this requirement in place. And if you look at our previous projects, the average air barrier testing was 0.57. Actual requirement from a stand 189 is 0.4. Our requirement is 0.25 and in average we achieved 0.18. And uh, th this graph shows for different types um, uh, the effect of uh, having a um, consultant. So if uh, you hold the hand of uh, your contractor and you are explaining what it means uh, to uh, design and to, uh, perform uh, uh, airtight um, uh, barrier, uh, and you do it uh, maybe twice or three times, uh, then uh, uh, it knowledge is already embedded and you already know that the next project they will be doing for you or for somebody else they will know what uh, is expected so you, you see the difference between uh, consultant and non consultant uh, now we tested the uh, um, uh, two uh, barracks one before renovation uh, another after renovation and here's the difference 0 0.75 cfm per square foot and 0.1 it's a dramatic difference, uh, almost uh, better than a, a passive house uh, building. So now, uh, Azure has, uh, since uh, we started uh, this uh, process, Azure has adopted uh, uh, our requirement. But uh, as you can see, they give you three passes. First uh, will be a requirement to air barrier materials. Uh, then uh, you can option to test the assemblies of the walls. And uh, only the third option is the whole building test. And of course, uh, the path of least resistance is number one. So uh, not uh, many con contracting uh, companies want uh, to uh, uh, do the air barrier testing of the whole building. So for, uh, in conclusions, so this is the uh, um, requirements result in um, uh, sustainable buildings and um, uh, they improve uh, soldiers' uh, well-being and uh, it's not only energy, it's also the sustainability of um, the building. And um, uh, we achieved that um, uh, for all our projects, uh, uh, new construction and renovation projects. Um, uh, uh, as I mentioned, we are till now we are requiring a measurement after each uh, project is completed. I was thinking about um, uh, uh, reducing that and uh, measure maybe two out of three, and then maybe each uh, third. Uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, easy for our um, uh, uh, contracting officers uh, to uh, require it for all the buildings. Um, estimated the first cost is about uh, 50 cents per square foot or uh, less, 
and the simple pack uh, depending upon the climate zone between two and uh, ten years. Okay, and from, uh, uh, this is my contact information. So if you are interested uh, in uh, talking more about uh, uh, requirements and the protocol and uh, other things, uh, you are welcome to send me an email. Now I think that we can go to a question. Great. Thank Great. you, Dr. Zivov. Next slide, please. Yeah, while Virginia is pulling that up, we're going to go, Melissa, to a poll question. Um, and while that's coming up, I'll also remind folks that if you can type in your questions into the window um, box, that would be great. We'll save time for questions at the end. Um, we have one more presentation from Deanna Hun, Dr. Hun, um, coming up. But before that, uh, one more poll question. This one is one where you can vote. Um, so go ahead and thank you, Virginia, for putting that up. Um, would you be interested in working with the tech team on developing resources such as those listed below to address air tightness requirements? That's one of the deep dive areas we're focusing on for this uh, call today. Um, installation or product specification guidance, case study demonstration, best pra practices, case studies demonstrating energy and non-energy benefits, training tools for decision makers and designers. And if you have other ideas, go ahead and uh, type that in. We'll give that a minute or so to see how you guys feel about that. This is great. We really appreciate your feedback on these things. And um, as we work on this, we'll, we'll be contacting you to get your feedback and involvement in developing any of these resources. So, and if, again, if you have questions for either Melissa or Dr. Zavav, go ahead and type those in. And um, if we have time, we might even uh, unmute your line and, and hear from you directly, or we might have to read your question, depending on the timing. So why don't we go ahead and uh, close that out. We're at about 60% here. Um, we'll show those results. Um, and you know, this is not surprising to me. We, we want to hear some case studies demonstrating both the energy and non-energy benefits. So that's, that's really great to hear. Um, that is something that we have been thinking about on our end with the Oak Ridge team. So we'll look forward to working on that. We'll also investigate how we can maybe address those other options that uh, folks have selected. So with that, why don't we go ahead and um, Melissa, do you want to introduce Dr. Hun? Yes, absolutely. So we're pleased to have Dr. Deanna Hun from Oak Ridge National Lab uh, presenting next. So Deanna, you're next. Yes, good afternoon. Um, I am, uh, my name is Deanna Hun, and as Melissa mentioned, um, I'm a researcher and, at Oak Ridge National Lab, and in particular, I work for uh, the Building Envelope Systems Research Group. And today, I'm just going to give you a very brief overview of a study that we just started on the evaluation of air tightness requirements for new commercial buildings. Next slide, please. So given that, as you, I just mentioned, this project just started, we would really appreciate your feedback on um, the relevance of this work that we are proposing uh, with regard to uh, 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 relevance uh, on how, this how relevant this information would be to building owners and managers as well as to the construction industry in general. And at, at the end, uh, you can either uh, email us or, or during the Q&A, let us know what tasks we need to add or what tasks we could delete because the information is uh, readily available. Next slide, please. So um, as you probably already know, commercial buildings uh, are responsible for about 19% of the energy that is consumed in the U.S. But uh, one, one of the reasons that we are con uh, conducting this work is because about 6% of this energy is due to infiltration or exfiltration through the building envelope or, in other words, air leakage. Okay, next slide, please. So, um, obviously then, our goal is to try to decrease this energy penalty. So, the goal of the study that we just started is to try to help building owners and managers and the construction industry uh, better understand key aspects uh, that are related to envelope air tightness. 
and more specifically, uh, we want to gather information about the uh, current earth tightness requirements, the methods that are currently being used to demonstrate compliance with these requirements. We want to also gather feedback from the stakeholders that are affected or could be affected by these requirements. We also, and also, we would also summarize what are the measurements that are currently available. And last, uh, our, la and our last task we have to do on trying to predict what's coming up for new commercial building construction. And I'm going to describe in a little bit more detail each of the bullets that I just uh, mentioned. And um, as you can see on the right side of the uh, slide, um, if you uh, can, if you want, you can type uh, yes or email e uh, your email address in the chat box to let us know if you are interested in collaborating in this study with ORNL. <laughs> Next slide, please. So, um, with regard to the current air tightness requirements, we are going to summarize what is currently a bit, uh, being uh, uh, used as a requisite both from the uh, building codes and also from standards. Also, we're going to look at uh, the local governments that tend to be a little bit more progressive in order to then summarize what, how they differentiate themselves from, let's say, what the IECC or ASHRAE are asking for. And in addition to that, we're going to look at what governmental institutions such as GSA and the Army Corps, as Dr. Shibor just presented, what are they requiring requiring and how that compares to what the codes are asking. Next slide, please. So on the methods to demonstrate compliance, uh, currently uh, most codes refer to ASTN E779 as what um, uh, consultants should follow. However, as uh, Dr. Chibot mentioned, the Army Corps uh, the Army Corps uh, recently uh, put a test protocol out. So we're going to compare how the ASTM standard, uh, uh, again, compares to the, what the Army Corps has proposed. Also, the Air Barrier Association of America, or ABBA, uh, has currently submitted a protocol to uh, ASTM. So we should be seeing that in uh, the near future. And also, we want to see how ASTM E779 compares to what the Canadian code is requiring. And again, all of this information uh, will serve us to better know or predict what may be the ask of new construction in the near future. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned, um, we also want to gather feedback from stakeholders. And these include these stakeholders include the consultants um, that conduct these um, air leakage tests. And we want to know from them, I mean, information that in general managers and, and designers would care to know, okay, what is their availability? Are they certification programs that they need to comply with in order to be, uh, uh, to be conducting these tests? Also, we want to gather more information about how the costs of their tests are determined and how long does it take to conduct this test and if there are any ways in which either one of these could be decreased. Okay, so also we want to find out, okay, what type of documents they provide to the designers and the uh, code officials and uh, what kind of uh, feedback they have received from customers who have agreed to uh, have these tests conduct be conducted in their uh, building. So also we're going to gather information from the customers. That, that's, again, the owners and the designers. And we want to know, okay, what kind of information they need in order to make more education, edu educated decisions about how to improve their tightness of their business. And um, also we want to know uh, what do they see as the benefits and drawbacks from requiring an early catch test in their buildings, and if there, uh, and in the end, okay. So we want to compile of, of this information to give some, uh, put together some best practices. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we are also going to summarize the data that is available on uh, the early catch rates of buildings, of commercial buildings, more specifically with regard to the building type the size of the building, the number of uh, stories of these buildings, and where these buildings tend to be located. 
Okay, next slide, please. And we will also gather information on what is being predicted for new construction. Again, with regard to the building types, size, and where these are going to be located, so that then we can combine this information with what I just previously described. Um, let's say with regard to the avail availability of our air leakage test consultants and also uh, the measured data with regard to uh, air leakage rates and also with regard to the uh, proposed changes to codes that were tried to be implemented in, to, in the 2018 IECC but they were not successful. And by combining all of this information, we may then be able then to determine the market that could benefit the most from improvements in air tightness. Okay, next slide, please. So again, we just started this uh, project, and um, we would appreciate your feedback uh, with regard of okay, what we we could change or uh, to Im improve it now that uh, again we are early in the project. Next slide. And with that, um, I'll be glad to answer questions when the time comes. Thank you, Deanna. Great. That was, that was excellent. Next slide, so Melissa, please. Melissa, if we're ready. Oh, um, Melissa, I was going to try and take questions before we went to your last slide. Sure. Is that okay? okay? Absolutely. Um, sorry for the switcheroo there. Um, so <laughs> let's go ahead and Oh, we were going to try and unmute someone. Um, I think that was Joan. Joan, are you there? Chatting with her. We're working on a competition. Okay, so Joan maybe is away from her phone, but um, let's go to the next question. Why don't we go ahead and mute that line there, Virginia, and um, I'll remind folks if you want to type in any questions for Dr. Zavav or doc, uh, Dr. Hun. Or Melissa. Okay, so we're muting those lines. Sorry about that. Um, so Joan's question is for Dr. Zavav. Does the Army Corps do testing for indoor air quality given the very tight building? Or do they adjust ventilation rates to ensure fresh air? Well, uh, we do not, and there is no need to uh, test on the uh, buildings for indoor quality if you make them airtight. Uh, you just uh, design a, a good ventilation. So if you want to open windows uh, when needed, you open windows. But you have a control over um, uh, uh, your um, ventilation rates uh, by mechanical systems. So you have a mechanical system with a heat recovery and uh, actually one uh, area on the uh, table on the second slide is the dedicated outdoor air system. So your design or over design your ventilation. Great. Thank Can you for I that. Can I answer that, Carolyn? Sure. Go ahead. So in general, uh, also um, designers follow ASHRAE 62.2, which provides uh, the uh, or uh, specifies the uh, ventilation rate requirements so that you can have adequate uh, indoor air quality. Great. Thanks for that. Um, we also have another question for Dr. Zavov. Um, does have the leak rate reductions been made with without six building issues? So I read that poorly, but let me read it again. Have the leak rate reductions been made without six building issues? Well, uh, uh, again, uh, you are not ventilating buildings um, uh, uh, through cracks. You have control over that. If you want to uh, have a natural ventilation, you uh, open windows, you open parts of the windows. So uh, you don't uh, uh, have uh, all these issues with the sick building syndrome if you tighten the buildings. So uh, 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 your residential buildings, probably in most cases, are designed so that uh, they ventilate uh, using cracks in the buildings, but um, uh, yeah. most of our, but uh, most of our commercial buildings should be designed uh, to have a mechanical system with the outdoor air. Yes. Yeah, so our questioner um, typed in. 
he wanted to know, um, has it improved the IAQ of the building? How has it helped that aspect? Well, uh, if you have a dedicated outdoor system, then you have um, a guaranteed um, supply of the fresh air from outside. Okay, great. So I'm not seeing a lot of questions on here. Um, I did want to mention to you, Diana, that we have um, at least four or five folks that um, are interested in working with you on the study, so that's great. Do send your email either to Diana or to Melissa. Either way, we'll make sure you're, you get involved on in that. So, yeah, uh, uh, Carolyn, um, uh, if they are interested uh, in working on demonstration projects, uh, I am leading a couple of those that are, re uh, yeah, with regard to the retrofit of building envelopes. So just let me know too. Right. Great. So why don't we go to the last slide here, um, and Melissa, you can take it away. And if folks have more questions, feel free to type those into your chat window. Um, we did have some issues with the unmuting, so apologies for that. We'll have to do the reading off of you typing it in um, if you have questions. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Caroline. And I wanted to just take a minute to thank all of our speakers, Dr. Han, Dr. Zibov, uh, Caroline and Virginia for helping us uh, put this uh, webinar, this tech team meeting to get together today. I want to thank all of our participants. Um, it's just been fantastic to see the response to this tech solution team. Um, we would invite all of you to join us at the Better Building Summit in May in DC. If, if you haven't already registered, uh, please think about that. And we are going to have two sessions on envelope technologies at the Better Building Summit. One is going to be on Tuesday afternoon of that week, so the afternoon of the 15th, called Hidden in Plain Sight, where we're going to be presenting tech team resources, including information on air barriers. And then on Wednesday morning, we're going to have a session called Stranger Things, and we're going to be presenting some new technologies on emerging window and walls, uh, wall systems. So, um, please, we invite you to participate. We're also going to participate in the Ask an Expert sessions at, at the Better Building Summit. So we're looking forward to it. It'll be a great event. Um, and in summary, um, the Get Involved section is really our ask of all of you. You know, please join the team if you're interested in keeping engaged with us. Send us your feedback on our web pages that we've put uh, out on the Better Building Alliance uh, website. As I mentioned, there's three different areas, and we, we want to get your feedback. Are there things missing or things we should be um, adding or, um, you know, what what would what is your feedback? What is useful to you that's on that website? Um, we talked about Deanna's study. You know, provide uh, input if you want to get engaged with that or uh, keep informed on the results. And we'd like to hear from you on demonstration projects. What what would you like? Uh, would you like to get engaged, or what would you like to hear from us when we get done? Make sure that uh, you stay engaged on the whole process. We're happy to to hear from everyone. So. My email address, address is down on the left, and um, we really appreciate all of you joining today. So with that, uh, we will end the webinar, and we did record this, so we will post this out on our website, and we'll send a follow-up email uh, with the links to you, to everyone who participated today. So thank you very much.